Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10, live on Channel's television. A reminder of our top stories. PDP candidates in the 2018 Austrian state governorship election, Ademola Adeleke, taken into police custody, hours after the court granted him permission to travel abroad for medical treatment. President of the United Nations General Assembly arrives in Abuja for a three-day visit to discuss handover to Nigeria of the 74th UNGA presidency, amongst other issues. A midday past vice president of Civil Loan, Sam Sumana, challenges politicians in Nigeria to respect their contract with the people and focus on building a strong and formidable country. And over 50 people killed after a fuel tanker overturned and exploded near the airport in Niamey, the Nigeria capital. ChannelCV.com has some more information for you. And go to YouTube.com forward slash channels web to view our videos. Watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channel CV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. And besides giving you access to news updates on the go, the Channel CV and Channels 24 app has an eyewitness feature, so use it to share those pictures, videos, or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu, and follow the instructions. And in Oshun State, government today abducted a lecturer from the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, Professor Olainka Adeyiwebe, along the Ife Ibado Expressway. Now, according to reports, the professor was traveling from Lagos to Ife at about 9 p.m. when armed men ambushed his vehicle and took him away. He's a professor at the College of Health Sciences, Department of Orthopedic Surgery and Traumatology at the Obafemi Awolowo University. The university authorities have confirmed the abduction and they say efforts are on by the police to secure his release. And the dust generated by the tensions that greeted the last elections in River State may have settled, but there are still lingering questions over some alleged killing during the polls. And this comes as the House of Representatives is seeking to conclude investigations into the killing of a chartered accountant during the exercise in Kana local government area, allegedly by security operatives. Members of the investigating committee, led by the chairman of the House, met with Governor Yesom Wike at the government house in Port Akut. There's a motion that was brought to the House by a member from this state, Honorable Kingsley Chinda, on the unfortunate killing of some people by the SAS, Federal SAS. And the motion was referred to the joint committees of the House on Army, Police, Human Rights and Justice to investigate and report back. We've had to come urgently at short notice because the house is rounding up. We need to conclude today, tomorrow, get our report ready for presentation to the house and subsequent consideration by the committee of the whole house. For, for me, I'm tired. Since 2015, we had a run and a run and a run. Everybody saw what SARS did. We complained and complained and complained and then government will not understand. They will politicize it. Well, we'll see what they are doing. News just in says Professor Olainka Adeyinbe has regained freedom. He is the professor at the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, who was kidnapped along the Ife Ibadan Expressway. Now let's cross over to Abuja Studios, where Ibrahim is standing by with more stories. Many thanks, Melinda. Now let's stay with security matters. The Minister of Defense, Mansur Dang Ali, has decried the absence of a military industrial complex in Nigeria. The minister, who was delivering a lecture on defense management at the National Defense College, says it has negatively impacted on defense management and, by extension, national security. He adds that reliance on external influence to determine the types of equipment used by Nigeria has, has increased expenditure and cost 
technological advancement as well as development. He however said the situation is being reviewed in the national defense policy. Correspondent Amaka Okafo has that report. The Minister of Defense, Mr. Mansur Dan Ali, arriving at the National Defense College. He inspects the quarter guard. Inside the hall of the National Defense College, he wastes no time in delivering his lecture on defense management and national security. According to him, the lack of a military industrial complex has been detrimental to national security management. The absence of military industrial complex in Nigeria has negatively affected defense management by extension national security. DICOM, the main strategic manufacturer of arms and ammunition in Nigeria, has suffered neglect over the years and thus been virtually non-operational. Consequently, the defense sector has to rely on external influence to undermine the types of equipment to be sold or acquired, and this has increased expenditure, reduced the multiplier effect on employment, encourage technological scale-up and underdevelopment of the economy. He also decried the poor funding of the sector, which according to him is capital intensive. He is however optimistic that recent appropriation will change the situation. One critical problem faces the Ministry of Defense is inadequate funding. As a result, the overhead requirement of the ministry are hardly met. The recent intervention by Mr. President, Commander-in-Chief, in approving funds for procurement of critical equipment of the armed forces is expected to assist improving the capacity of our military. On his path, the commandant of the college is of the opinion that the military needs to continue to evolve. In a global world where the security environment is ever-changing and presenting new dynamics, threats are mutating and responses to them have to equally be evolving. There will be no one shoe that will fit all. Expectations are that the new defense strategy policy will tackle these challenges in the security sector. Amaka Okafo, Channels Television News. And now to judicial matters. A Lagos magistrate's court sitting in the Abuta Meta area has extended till June the 10th its remand order against the dismissed police inspector Lale Konguyemi, accused of killing a football fan, Kolade Johnson. This means that Oguyemi, who has already spent 30 days in Ikoe prison custody following his remand by the court, will now stay in custody for 35 more days. Magistrate Eo Salawi extended the remand order because the Office of the Lagos State Director of Public Prosecution, DPP, is yet to give its advice on how the case should proceed. Oguyemi was not in court today and no reason was given by the police for his absence. On April the 6th, he was brought before the court on one count charge of murder. Meanwhile, a federal high court also in Lagos has fixed June the 20th for adoption of final addresses and the trial of a former acting director general of Nimasa, Haruna Babajaro, and one Dauda Bawa for alleged 304 millionaire fraud. Mr. Babajoro assumed leadership of the Nigeria Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA, after the tenure of another Director General, Patrick Akwobolokemi, who is also facing charges before the court. He and his co-accused are standing trial on 19 counts, bordering on theft, fraudulent conversion of NIMASA's property to his private use and money laundering. The defendants were charged with committing the offense in Nemasa between January 2014 and September 2015. They were arraigned on April 12, 2016, and had each pleaded not guilty to the charges. The court then admitted them to bail in the sum of five million naira each, with two sureties each in like sum. At today's proceedings, the defense closed its case after the testimony of a recalled prosecution witness, Mr. Barnabas Ishaku. Justice Mojisola Olatore has adjourned till June the 20th for adoption of final addresses, after which the court is expected to deliver its judgment. The Court of Appeal in Abuja today dismissed the appeal seeking the disqualification of Ogun State Governor-elect Dakwa Biodun of the All Progressive Congress. A three-man panel 
of the Court of Appeal led by Justice Deti Haya ruled that the appeal anchored on the failure of Mr. Abiodun to declare his university degree in his form CF001 submitted to INEC was unmeritorious. The appellant, Abdurafiu Barua, had challenged the March the 7th, 2019 judgment of the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory in Apo, Abuja, which dismissed his suit, faulting Abiodun's legibility to contest for the election. But arguing his client's appeal against the judgment, Chief Kanwa Agabi SAN contended that the FCT High Court erred in law by not disqualifying Mr. Dapo Abiodun. APC's lawyer Damien Dodo SAN and Mr. Abiodun's counsel Kende Ogun Wood Miju SAN opposed the appeal, insisting that the suit was a pre election matter but was filed outside the 14 days provided by the Fourth Alteration of Act of 2017. Crown Flower Mills, makers of Mama Gold Flower, says it is investing billions of naira and expanding its business base across Nigeria. The managing director of the company, Anurag Shukla, also promised better times for its distributors nationwide following its acquisition of Nongote Flower Mills. We were speaking at the company's customers forum in Abuja. It is time to reward the effort of distributors of Crown Flower Mills who have been working tirelessly to market the company's product across the different corners of the country. Families, friends and staff of Crown Flower Mills at this occasion celebrate each other for their hard work the previous year. The managing director of Crown Flower Mills took to the podium to thank his dealers for making sure that its product ranging from flour Pasta and semolina, among other products, are sold. We are going to have a lot of synergies of wheat procurement, a uh, lot more storage, a lot more places for you to basically choose your products from. So over a period of time, I sincerely wish that this translates into good business for all of us. Next to speak is the vice president in charge of commercials. He outlines what the company hopes to achieve in 2019 and beyond. What we will be doing from this year onwards will be how do we support you individually to ensure that you keep growing, to ensure that you keep succeeding and you rise far and above your competitors. After the speeches, it is time to reward the loyalty of their dealers. One after the other, winners were called to receive their rewards. Some of the awardees explain what motivates them to do more in selling Crown Flower Mills products. When you bring people together like this, you give people that perform very well a kind of award. It also gives a motivation to others. The management of Crown Flour Mills Nigeria Limited promised not to rest on its oars until its products gain popularity in all homes in Nigeria. It's time for a break now. When the news at 10 returns, Central Bank Governor Godwin Emefile launches distribution of high yielding cotton seeds to farmers with a view to resuscitating Nigeria's cotton and textile industry. That's on our business news.